Hi, everybody. This is Angela Cadalesa here with Greg Pearson, a member of our Polymass Place community. He recently joined. He's a pretty new member and has just come in as sort of this super enthusiastic, can-do attitude, want to get involved, super superstar. Um, and so I wanted to take an opportunity to chat with Greg and just pick his brain, see how, you know, Polly Matthew is impacting his life and, and what his ideas are, what his um, possible future projects may be in the community. So Greg, where should we start? Well, first of all, I want you to come with me everywhere I go so you can introduce everybody <laughs> or introduce me to everybody that way because that was a great intro. I'll take that any day. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I think the thing for me, I mean, first of all, I found out what polymathy was because I was interested. I'm actually, actually having researched my own heritage. I'm, I'm third generation Italian American. Um, so, of course, um, you know, we look at certain inventors like Leonardo da Vinci. And when you look under Wikipedia, it says he was a polymath. And I was like, hmm, what's a polymath? And when I saw what it was, I thought, man, I wish I could be a polymath. Man, I guess I'm, you know, I can't, I'm, I didn't invent all these things. I'm not a genius. Um, but then months later, I did a little bit more research on polymathy and found your work and uh, the Facebook page and the YouTube, actually started with YouTube. Um, and what I started to notice is as I was listening to interviews and the way you described polymathy, I was going, Wow, that's me. And it, nowhere did it say that a polymath is incredibly accomplished or has an incredibly high IQ or anything like that. It was a lot of the things that you guys, you meaning you and your, your guests, it, was, it wasn't just, you know, the, the definition of polymath that you would find on Wikipedia or in a dictionary. It was character traits. It was kind of being a loner, uh, kind of. Uh, thinking outside the box, those types of things that really made me realize that, wow, maybe I'm at least polymathic. And I went through that stage of saying, okay, I'm comfortable with saying I'm polymathic. But as you and I were talking about not too long ago, um, embracing your polymathy or just embracing you are a polymath. I've done that. I literally said that out loud and man, it makes all the difference because now I swear, I feel like I'm learning faster because I'm not getting in my own way saying, oh, I'm not that smart. Oh, I don't have what it takes. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, oh. No, I give myself permission to just uh, take it in and run with it. And it's been phenomenal. And um, I've really enjoyed just the short amount of time that I've been in the community. I've really enjoyed it because it's an incredible platform for conversation um, it's a place where I feel com comfortable to express myself in ways that may not be received with the same warmth that I've, I've felt from the community that you have created. Well, thank you for sharing that, Greg. I, I will say that there are, there are some thinkers and influencers in the polymathy space who tend to speak of this like, it's only the eminent creative geniuses that should should pursue their polymathy or that are polymaths or you know the dead guys from history basically and i just feel like i that's the opposite of what i want to, what i want to do with polymathy i don't want to be elitist about this i do say you know as you as you pointed out that for some people who may not feel comfortable saying saying i'm a polymath if they're at that point because they're not as accomplished as they'd like to be, or for whatever reason, they don't like that word, just making it an adjective, polymathic, um, or I, I'm a polymathic person. Point of that is that this can be accessible to almost anybody. I mean, anybody who's good at learning, who identifies as being sort of curious and open and brave and okay thinking and existing and living and being outside the box, um, breaking out of the cage of professional specialization. If you identify that way, then you, you can be polymathic. Anybody can step into their polymathy more if they choose to, to be broad in their approach to learning and deep. Like I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say that polymathy is for people who wanna be dabblers. 
because that's not what it is. The word implies you have some, some depth and some real command and some expertise in at least a couple of areas, but, but you can also be a dabbler on top of that. And so anyway, I feel like I'm, I'm babbling, but the point is for me, polymathy is not only for the elite. It's not only for the dead dudes from history. It's not only for the super geniuses of our time. We all can step into this capacity and it's in our nature. If you ask me, I I agree with you hundred percent. And I I would take it even one step further. You know um, I, I do hear a lot, or I've read a lot about people, you know, polymathies are good at learning. I think for, for me, from my experience of polymathy, I don't think you have to be good at learning. I think you have to want to be good at learning Mm -hmm. and then learn how to learn. Yeah. You know, that's something I'm pursuing right now. That's because I'm thinking to myself like, okay, I want to do all these things. And I think one of the most shared experiences that, that I've, that I'm picking up on is that most people in the group have, or a lot of, not most, a lot of people in the group have expressed there just isn't enough time. Like I've joked to my wife before, if I could just quit my job, you know, and I could just do all these things, um, then I, I'd be so much better off. I'd have more time to do all these things. So instead of opening up my schedule by quitting my job, and of course that was a, a joke, but if, if that were the only way to do it, I quit my job and then I have all these extra hours in the day. What if I were to take the moments that I do have and really compress my ability to take those things in? Am I, am I doing everything that I can do to learn in the best possible way? So I actually have a book now that I'm reading on learning technique. All right. All right, we had a little technical glitch, but we're back. Go on. So you found this book about learning techniques. Yeah, it was actually a, a book about uh, memorizing, how to memorize things. And the book is called Moonwalking with Einstein. I can't remember the author's name. I know he and his brother are both, I think they're both authors. But that book was amazing. They talk about, uh, he talks about creating, uh, what is the memory palace? And this was used, I believe it was the Romans, but I mean, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years ago, these techniques existed that I had no idea uh, existed. But now, if I want to remember, and I've done this before, I've done this, I've challenged people uh, to give me 20 grocery items right now, write them down, you tell them to me, don't let me see them, and I'll memorize them, and I can do it. I can do it because it's a technique that I followed, and some of you probably already know what that is, but it's amazing. So if I can do that, I mean, I can teach, I can teach anybody to do this in about five minutes, to memorize a grocery list of 20, 30, 40, no problem. Seems impossible until you learn how to do it. So you learn how to learn. So yeah, again, that's such a great point. It, it, it's, a, it's amazing. I, I, for me, the number one most important thing is um, to have a desire for something. And then the other thing, and I think I've said this before to you as well, when you take on a new task, because somebody asked a question to uh, Terry, what was her name? Terry, is it Babin? Terry, Terry Babers. Babers. Yes, Babers. I'm sorry, Terry. Um, I watched that interview and somebody asked her three questions and she, they said, I know we're only supposed to ask one. So I'm going to ask you three and you only pick one. And Terry was able to answer the first two. And then Shrikant said, OK, we have to move to the next person. But the third question uh, was, what do you do when you start to get bored with a new project that you were really excited about? Well, the first thing I say with that is once you're excited about it, already put in your mind at one point the honeymoon will end it's gonna suck at some point <laughs> just like studying italian every morning like i do because it got to a point where I, was like, <laughs> I don't want to do this but i did it and now i'm past it because i'm starting to speak italian and i'm starting to listen to italian music and i can tell you what they're saying and then from there the next phase is you don't just understand the words but you start to feel things in an italian sense so it broadens mm-hmm. your experience but you have to push through you have to like lifting weights you know if you want to make if you want to make a difference if you want to improve you have to go to the point of failure and then push past that recover and then push past it absolutely i i've heard this question so many times from from polymathic people is like i'm so interested and like it's hard to finish and i feel like 
well, it's up to you. Like, do you want to obtain your goals? Do you want to finish projects or not? And if you do, it does sometimes take discipline, you know, um, it's not like those things just come automatically or super easily without effort. Like goals can take effort and concentration sometimes. Yeah. See, and that's the thing I, you know, I've always heard, like when I get to the point as, as a kid, if I get to a point where I just didn't want to do this thing that I was doing, well, you must not want it bad enough, but that's not true. That's not true because what you don't want to do is you don't want to suffer. You don't want to struggle. But once you accept that as a necessary part of the process, if I could teach myself to fly, like literally Superman fly, and I had to do all these things that really sucked along the way, if I pushed myself past those things and then I could actually fly, I wouldn't say, man, this wasn't worth it. No, because I can fly. But it was just <laughs> tough getting there. That's yeah. why not too many people do. That's why everybody owns a cell phone because it's super easy. Anybody can get a cell phone. It's awesome but it's accessible to everybody. But those, those walls that you have to, that you have to, uh, to climb to get to these amazing things that are accessible to every living human being, they're really, really sometimes seemingly insurmountable, but you can get through them. Sometimes you climb over them and sometimes you punch a hole right through them, but you get <laughs> them, you do what you have to do. Uh-huh. And then you are more of yourself. And then it's time to move on to something new, something exciting, something that further expands your, your, your consciousness. Yeah. That's a good lead in maybe to, you have so kindly offered to create an audio book version of my dissertation, which I never had expected anybody. Honest. If I'm honest, I wrote that dissertation and I figured nobody in the world would ever read it like except maybe the people on my committee that's because I didn't realize people find and and would read a dissertation I had not done that myself except when I had to in my doctoral program to see like what a dissertation looks like but but I did put it out there in the world and people did find it and people like you read it and it resonated with you and you offered to create an audiobook of it which I'm not sure but I would imagine there aren't many or maybe any doctoral dissertations which have been turned into audiobooks so do you want to talk about that for a minute yeah I just want to say that I'm just piggybacking on your PhD so we can make history together because I'm going to be the first to read one (laughs) you know know, I joked with you the other day about this that uh, I would change the title to the uh, human potential manifesto because it in a way gives proof and in essence permission to people to do whatever the hell they want, be whatever they want, as yeah. much as they want until the day that they die. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I, I, whew, it's, it's just exciting. It's very exciting. It's amazing to, to realize that this potential lies within each and every one of us. All you have to do is want to do it and you have to put together a very well-organized plan. You have to make sure that, that your information is correct. Um, but yeah, your, your writing um, is for me so it's so inspiring in that you did the research you went out there and you found proof of what everyone secretly or maybe not even known to themselves really wanted to be true and that's that you can do anything you know and you made it accessible you didn't just write about like you said dead geniuses or dead guys from thousand years ago it's accessible to everybody everyone Mm -hmm. you know so as long as you're alive and you have a brain and desire you can do it and so um for me i have uh, you know one of the things that i've done in in the past i was a uh, i was a dj and i was an actor i've done some voiceover work and i just enjoy doing voiceover you know sometimes if i read a book i just read it out loud to myself i just like doing it and i thought I was reading your dissertation out loud and I thought, why am I not recording this? Oh my gosh. So I, you know, reached out. I don't know if I reached out to you or Kane first, but um, yeah, I mean, I, I just want to be as close to this entire concept as possible. So um, yeah, it's just really, really, really exciting. Yeah, that is super exciting. One other thing, um, well, not one other thing, but you, I know you have other possible ideas, like you mentioned, like a book 
book club or maybe movie club or or yes. what other what other ideas like if you had all the time in the world and you could get as involved as you wanted like I know you've got the learnability lab you're starting you got the, the dissertation into an audiobook like you already have several projects and obviously time is limited but I know you've got ideas for other things you could do too so would you like to share about any of those ideas yes yes I would first of all uh, I have to say my wife has told me this before I need to have a notepad in my pocket so that when I have an idea I write it down otherwise it's gone because there are so many things I could tell you right now, but I don't remember what they are. Um, but but I will say that some of the, uh, the definitely, you know, I had posted that I wanted to do a book club and. Yes, I want to do a book club, but first of all, somebody else already came up with the idea and I'm kind of relieved because I will read a book, but I am not a voracious reader. So I'm not the right person to lead a book, book club. I'm just not. I'm one of the guys who are going to say, hey, Greg tomorrow chapter two right oh yeah uh, and i'll do it <laughs> but what i would like to lead very much um is uh, uh, a a movie group uh movies that uh don't necessarily have to lend themselves to polymathy um although i, I did make a post this morning about uh it was the i think it was the electric life of louis wayne he was he was a, a painter and he painted cats. That's all I'm going to say because the movie's amazing. But my wife started to watch it on her own, and she stopped and said, "Hey, there's this movie. This is before she, she uh, I found Polymathy. She said, "Hey, I think you'd really like this." And then we started watching it. And by the time we watched it, I had already found Polymath's place. And I was like, "Holy crap! This guy's a polymath because it, it doesn't use the word, but he absolutely 100% is. And if anybody watches it, you're going to see what I mean." Um, but I just thought, "Wait a minute." I have a degree in film. Why am I trying to lead a book club? I, I went to school for this. This is what I do. I take movies and I break them apart because that's what I was taught to do because there's so much metaphor that you can apply to your life. So yeah, so I wanna do a movie uh, movie club. Same type of thing. I'd like to do a live conversation, um, you know, screens, whatever. I'm not a technology guy. I think I mentioned that already. Um, I, um, there was one other thing I was going to bring up and I forgot. Ah, Kane introduced me to a gentleman and I can't remember his name. He's a member of the, of the group, uh, but he, um, he's a screenwriter. Now I, as I mentioned, I, I went to film school. I was also uh, a film and, and television actor. I didn't make much money doing it, but I really pursued it. I, I studied the, the, uh, the art of acting for a really long time, close to a decade. And I kind of hung that up a few years ago, but I don't know. I, I, I think the combination of being uh, a film student, I focused on production, not theory, and having been an actor, I, I wonder, I wonder if I would enjoy the process more if instead of always going to auditions and getting someone else's content and trying to be what they need me to be for the role, maybe I can actually write something and be that something. So kind of doing both and working with someone who's like-minded. Um, so sorry, I can't remember this guy's name right now, I'm kicking myself, but anyway, you know who you are. Um, but yeah, to, to create content uh, that would again get the message out there that you can do whatever you want to do if we can do that in the form of a narrative film even if it's a short film um and maybe maybe polymath's place can be polymath's place films i don't know it's kind of kind of exciting and that's yeah. the key if it's exciting we should at least try yeah that sounds yeah. super fun you know i have a lot of videos on youtube but none of them are like fun they're just like, I mean, I shouldn't say they're not fun, but they're just, you know, like interviews or, or talks or panel presentations. Right. They're not like um, something more theatrical, mm -hmm. which would be super fun if you, you know, I do wonder if anyone in the community would want to get involved with you or, or I don't know. Yes. I don't know, but there's or so much potential. Maybe we should do a, uh oh, here's an idea. Maybe we should do a, uh, five minute film festival. So you have to make a film that's five minutes. We put them up and that's it. It'll be due by such such a date. <laughs> you put it up, it's easy to do. You can get you can get editing software for next to nothing, sometimes free. I mean, 
you can you can shoot a film on a phone now and have it look amazing. So I think that's on the list now. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it would be fun to see see little like five minute clips too of like what is life a day in the life of a polymath or something like that. I mean, right. these films could be on anything, but yeah, I mean, obviously I'm prone to talking about polymathy. And so it would be super fun to see what people come up with about like, what is it like being a polymath or a day in the life? See, and that's, that's the thing. It's another thing I've been thinking about. I, I love that there's information on poly. Okay, we're back. Great. What were you, what were you just saying? Well, you were talking about how, uh, all the video content that you have is uh, in so many, not in so many words, but basically you're saying very informational about polymathy. You really like talking about polymathy and how it affects people's lives. And I love that stuff. I love that stuff. What I would also like to see is what people do with that outside of the, the conversation of polymathy. So in the same way that I instantly knew uh, Louis Wayne in the, in the movie, The Electric Life of Louis Wayne, I instantly knew this guy's a polymath. Like, oh my God, this, this is it. This is the guy. But they didn't necessarily talk about it in, in uh, the sense of polymathy and polymath. So I, I love the idea of having uh, diversity in the uh, type of, of videos and content that, that we put out. So just like, you know, whether it's art, um, well, film is art, but I'm, when I say art, I mean sculpture. I, I'm a sculptor. So whether you're a sculptor or a painter or a filmmaker, just doing those things with the understanding that it's within the breadth of this community, which is a polymathic community. Mm -hmm. And I love that idea. And I guess the larger point here is that there's so much potential. There's so many fun projects and so many um, things that we could do to explore our polymathy, to represent our polymathic ways of thinking and being. Um, and Greg, you're, you're a wonderful example of someone in the community who's really stepped up and like, you know, you're getting involved, you're leading initiatives, making things happen. And so I just want to take this opportunity to also encourage other people. Like if there's something you'd like to see happen in the group, talk to me, talk to Kane, like let's explore it. Maybe you can lead some initiatives or some projects and see how it goes. May won't be a lifelong commitment. I promise. Like give it a try though, for some period of time. Um, get involved. Like this community will be what we co-create. And this is not the Angela show. This is not the Kane show. Like this is our co-creation. So I do want to encourage you all to be like Greg, basically. And if there's something you'd oh like to gosh. see happen, then get involved. Let's do it. <laughs> don't be like Greg, whatever <laughs> you do. Don't be like Greg. Just be you as loud as you can. <laughs> Absolutely. I completely agree. Let's all be well, ourselves. Thank you. Thank you for that compliment. I, re I really appreciate it. I am incredibly excited to be here, um, be here within the, within the community. It's just, I, I feel like I've stumbled upon a gold mine, uh, you know, gold mine. Uh, it's, it's different because I wake up in the morning and I'm always excited, like consistently, no matter what, whether it's a day off, whether I'm going to work, I have a great job, I love my job. But it's a job where I get to do a variety of things. There are so many different types of things that I get to do, and I have the freedom to do it. I'm incredibly lucky to have this new job. It's new. Um, but, you know, I didn't get the job because of Polymath's Place, but they kind of happened at the same time. So, man, I am just on fire right now as far as <laughs> lust for life. I'm, I'm, I'm the happiest I've probably ever been. Um, got my wife and three daughters. We're happy. We're healthy. We just moved back to, uh, to Dallas. We were in Baton Rouge for nine years. We live in an amazing place. Um, everything's just phenomenal right now. So I know it won't necessarily always be like this, but I'm going to grab on and, and, and just really enjoy it. And maybe it will, maybe it'll always be great because I have that mindset that no matter what, I'm going to take what I'm given. I'm going to learn from it. I'm going to grow from it and I'm going to move on to new things. Absolutely. Well, that's a wonderful attitude to have. Greg, do you have any other final thoughts or comments about polymathy or how it's impacting your life before we wrap up? Or even future projects you're thinking of? Just any, any final thoughts before we finish this video? Um, I, I guess more than anything, I, I just want to say, uh, and I've said this to you before, 
Um, I think it's incredibly important that people understand that, you know, being, and I, I, sorry about the air quotes, but being a polymath just means you're awake. That's it. You know, you're just awake. You just have decided, yes, that's it. It doesn't, I, I unless I, I could be wrong too, but I don't think so. It doesn't mean that you are genetically predisposed to, you know, a variety of, of um, disciplines or any of that. It just means that you want to learn stuff. You just, you want to do. For me, the learning isn't what I like. It's learning so I can do things. And it may be different from you. Maybe you, you just like to learn. You like to retain information. It just feels good. Great. I read that book. What's next? For me, I look at every bit of information as like a recipe to do something. That's just my personality. So whatever it is, the answer is yes, you can do it. Just do it. I know it's going to suck for a while because if you want to get past that threshold of, of uh, going from not being able to do something to doing something, it's hard, but you can do it. Each and every one of us can do it. And once you realize that, the whole world is wide open to you. Yeah. You know, I really feel like poly being polymathic is just deciding to be all in at life, to not shrivel mm -hmm. and shrink because of expectations or pressures. It's a way of freeing yourself to have the full human experience. And so Absolutely. it's, yeah, it's not just like, how can I learn it? How can I live? How can I be vibrant in my experience here on earth? Um, that's part of why I'm so passionate about this because it's, it goes beyond just adult learning. It goes to like, how can we make the best of our, our human life here? And what's more important than that? You know, I, I can't think of anything else. Truly. I agree with you. hundred yeah. percent. I really do. Yeah. All right. Well, on that note, I guess we will go ahead and wrap up. Greg, thank you so much. I'm so glad you found the community and thank you for being so on fire and joining in and taking the lead and everything that you're doing. It's been so nice to get to know you. And um, thank you for this chat today as well. Likewise, thank you so much. And thank you for doing what, what you do and everything that you've done. Uh, truly, I really genuinely uh, look at it as a, as a huge service to, to everybody. Really phenomenal. Thank you so much, Greg. All right, we'll have a wonderful afternoon. You too.